So let's go back to Diva and how this all came about as they were trying to grow their company. So the investment banks start pushing this out and getting it into mass retail, into Ulta, into Target, into some Walmarts, into wherever else, Amazon and whatever, and people are just buying it. So they're not having to go to a salon anymore because these investment banks, they're not, they're not in the hair business. They're in the what makes us money business. They care if it's a widget, right? So you see, you, so you see it all of a sudden starting, start showing up everywhere. And then an interesting thing happens also that I see. Now, remember, like I said, these investment banks, they want to bring all the costs down and they want to you know, make the value look way higher. So profits are way higher. Remember, the face of the brand at the time, Lorraine Massey, gone. The way it's been back in the, from way back in the day, and now it kind of changed, and here's where we really saw a huge advent of it. Back in the day, hair product manufacturers on a professional level always had a celebrity stylist. Paul Mitchell had Robert Chromians. I mean, that was the guy, and Angus Mitchell. Um, I mean, you can name all kinds of different hair product bands, but they always had a celebrity stylist that did the shows and the education and the flamboyant stuff. I mean, it, trust me, I've been to a million hair shows. That, that's what it's like. Diva never had that. Diva Curl never had that. So they were just pushing the brand, and especially after Lorraine was gone, the brand just kept pushing and going into a consumer-based brand. In other words, before... If we look at what Jonathan says, that he believed the when deal was technique, and if we believe that Diva Curl is the same as when, as far as what it is, conditioning, whatever the heck, cleansing, conditioner, right? Let's just call it that. Nobody's teaching the technique. They're just selling the products. Who's actually looking on the label? How do I use this shampoo? Who the heck looks at a bottle and says, how do I use shampoo? Virtually nobody. Fast forward a little bit farther. Now, all of a sudden, 2006, what comes about? YouTube. And what comes about shortly after that? Instagram. Well, not shortly. A number of years after that. All of a sudden, you get Instagram. But let's talk about YouTube in general. So you start seeing people making videos. And little by little, as things go forward, you see the advent of the influencer raise up, okay? And that's the name that came about several years later. But there were lots of people who were getting, you know, who were building channels, and they were just average individuals using products that were pretty and had great hair or were for skincare products, be skin or whatever. You saw this movement kind of go. And what we saw from a professional level is we saw the what used to be the celebrity stylist all of a sudden disappear. And they start more and more getting pushed away and the influencer end of it start taking over as the experts. So consumers are looking and they're seeing that the influencers have become the experts. The problem is, is that because they're buying products in the stores or wherever or from Diva Curl, just like everybody else, they're not going through the training of the, well, let's say a large percentage of them aren't going to a Diva trained stylist to learn how to actually use these products. And now these influencers who have millions and millions of viewers, a lot of them, or views, tens of millions in some cases, are learning to use Diva Curl products from people that have never been trained how to use Diva Curl products because the professional has been pushed aside. Now, again, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to jump us up around a little bit on this to bring you all together. And I'll tell you why, I'll tell you again why I'm doing this in one take and we're not, we're not splicing it. And primarily I'm doing it in one take because I want to show you that I actually know what I'm talking about and I don't have to read it off a script as I pick up my script. <laughs> it's not a script. It's just my it's just my notes because I wanna I wanna make sure that I follow along on this. So, all right, so let's let's move a little faster forward on this. So the the Diva Curl settlement, a judge actually approved a settle I'm sorry, the Wen settlement. In the Wen settlement, um 
it was uh, twenty six point two five million dollars. Um, there there were a lot of unanswered questions from that, but believe it or not, I knew when myself. I knew when inside and out. Why? A, because I'm in the hair and beauty business. Two, because I know the guy personally who, who put the whole deal together originally years and years ago. But three, I go to the gym early in the morning and I go on the stair climber and the TVs are up there. I watched, I watched the, D, or the when infomercials. I've seen 2,000 if I've seen one. I mean, there. I just, I, I've seen them and and over and over and over, end to end to end, all the different ones. It's, it. Th- this all kind of makes sense as we as we go as we go farther. So, all right. So where do we go from here? So already, so you you're you're seeing kind of what I'm talking about as far as as this going uh, going together. So now let's talk about like say the last three years. So 2017, we're in February 2020 now. 2017. Um, Eris Management buys um, Diva Curl from 10 Grand Partners. Now, if you noticed, in the last three years is when you started seeing all this happening. Now, could it be a combination of ingredient changes? Yes, and I talked about that in my last video of manufacturers trying to get the value up to be able to sell the company for more profit. A lot of people went out and they said that that this heiress deal was going to be the last one. I said, no, I said, this, this is a middle, this is a middle man investment company. This is an investment company that um, is a bigger dollar one. So like, for example, this first partnership they made, those kind of investment banks, a lot of them have smaller amounts of capital that they use and they take companies and instead of making a big chunk, they make a small chunk, but they build it up and they do, and, that, and that's what they do. And they did it. Eris grabbed it. They've got more money. They're going to push it to this higher level, which is what they, what they've been doing. And that's the three years from 2000 and uh, you know, let's call it two and a half years from 2017 to late 2019, same things going on, but that's the time period that everybody started seeing these issues of hair loss, all of a sudden creeping up. Could it be ingredients? It could be. I don't believe it's all of it because it's the combination of things of, of, you know, Eris is trying to build the brand up, you know, to get more money for it. At the same time, they're trying to gain more market share. Exactly how I explained. How are they doing it? They're putting it into mass retail, a product that really needs instruction to know how to use it. You know, I've talked to people that are influencers or uh, people in that curl space that they really don't understand. And I'm not going to get into how you use it with the, you know, you scrub it in, scrub it out, whatever. They're, they're, they've been using these products just like their traditional curly hair products and they're not. So if you combine that with the fact that they probably did go to some cheaper ingredients, it's like perfect storm. I hope you guys are following me on this, but it's like a perfect storm of bad. So not only are you lowering the ingredient quality to get the, and I'm not saying it's significant, could be, might not, might be just a little bit, but you know, that's the idea. Um, And the fact that people aren't really being trained and now they're going to YouTube and Instagram, they're being trained by people that haven't been trained, that they think know that they know, but they may very well not know, you know, if that makes any sense, you know, sure. And I, I don't want to get in the argument of, you know, well, I went to a diva train salon and I come and I'm an influencer. And I'm like, all oh, right, 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 right. But that's not, that's not everybody. There's lots of people grabbing them off the shelf that have never read the label, never been properly trained how to use them. That's, that's how the brand was built. That's how the brand was built. All right. So let's move on. Um, let's move on. How much time are we at now? Okay, good. All right, let's let's see if I can get through this. I have so much more to tell you guys, but I'm, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to bump this forward faster so so you know. Um, okay, so November 2019. This is this past. Actually, it was September, and then it actually closed. November 2019. Eris Management sells Diva Holdings to Henkel uh, AG. What is Henkel? Henkel is a giant. Um, 
hair product, beauty product manufacturing company based in Germany. Um, this should be the final sale. Lots of people have went on and believed that it was that Henkel, the company that owns it now, is dodging all the complaints and they're ignoring all the women and whatever. And, blah, and yeah, I would probably agree they probably are. It's not how I would handle it. At the same time, I will say this. I don't believe this is Henkel's fault. However, just because of the timing. However, Henkel being as big as they are, trust me, they're not buying higher quality ingredients to make products with. That's 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 not their th that's not their thing. They're gigantic and they use that for buying power to buy ingredients for whatever products they're manufacturing. So, um will the ingredients get better? Maybe, maybe not. I think that's a real toss up. Um, they may be able to be buying better quality ingredients um, and keep the price where it is right now. Will they do that? I don't know. My experience in the venture capital world is no, but I don't know. M maybe they will. Diva Curl is a really strong brand. That's why they bought it. It's a really strong brand. What are they going to, you know, what are they going to do to fix this situation? I don't know. Um, did they know this was going on before it started? Yeah. I mean, with a sale price, you know, in the hundreds of millions of dollars, there's no way they didn't know that this was happening or on the horizon or how they were going to deal with it. So, um, all right. So let's, let's talk about that. Let's, let's kind of try to wrap this up so I can bring this all together again. It's, I know it sounds like I'm pointing fingers and I'm, and I'm sticking it to people, but I'm really not. I, I, I'm really trying to show you, I mean, if you know the history, you'll see how, how this has played out. So, um, so as I said, now all of a sudden you've got all these big name influencers, a lot of them who are, are being paid by Diva Curl because the heiress management started pushing away from the stylists and they start paying influencers and they're taking the biggest names, like probably the biggest 15 or 20 curly hair influencer names and they're backing those people as the experts. Well now, and they've pushed out the stylist. I mean, name one celebrity stylist right now from Diva Curl that you see marketed or talked about. There aren't any, there aren't any, and there's a reason. And I don't see there being, well, I shouldn't say that. There aren't any right now. But you can name lots of beautiful female curly hair influencers that are tied to this brand as well, right? Well, the problem is now you run into this crap and you had that's going on right now you had these influencers that were being paid or compensated in whatever products trips money whatever the heck heck it is are the face of the diva curl brand but now the craps hit the fan and they have no answers other than to throw their hands up and try to distance themselves and post videos online that are getting more and more millions and millions of views saying i'm done with diva curl well that's all great you know but the fact is, is that they all told us and told you guys to use Diva Curl, to buy Diva Curl, because it looks, look what, how great my hair is, whatever. And now things go bad. And because they don't know, because they're not industry experts, you know, they don't know enough. I mean, a lot of them are really smart, but they, they're, they're not, they're not certified curl specialists or experts or trained licensed stylists you know the majority of them aren't you know some of them are but they they haven't been around really really long um and now they're throwing up their hands and they're and, and they're they're complaining and telling you and giving you their complaints and you get to hear their horror stories but the fact is is that they're not giving you any solutions or any answers why because they don't know you don't know what you don't know so now they're in a, in, in a rock and a hard place. And what I find really interesting is now I find still the same people that are, 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 you know, that have been following and that have got into the situation. Now those same people, some of them are making product recommendations again. And those people are following. I'm like, well, why? You, so you followed them the first time you lost your hair. Now you're going to, and so did they. And now you're going to follow them again. I, again, I'm not bashing. You're going to see why in a minute as, as I get, as I get long, uh, around here. So what we did with our uh, curly hair Q&A show, uh, what we did is we started reaching out to a number of certified diva stylists, trained stylists who really, you know, know what they're doing and thought, OK, let's have some open Q&A and we'll, you know, we'll do our show and let's let's figure this out. You know, let's bring on some influencers and and, you know, people who are, you know, have used these for a long time, who have had significant issues. And let's talk this out and figure it out.
So I reached out to um, a number of people, um, one of which um, was I um, was a Sherry Harbinger, uh, who's the um, Diva Curl Academy founder. Uh, I reached out to her. Yep, she's she'll 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 talk. She doesn't want to talk, um, but she will because she's gone from the company. She's moved on. Um, we Dad Steven, founder of uh, Diva Curl. Yep, she's interested in talk about it, and she will. Um, interesting thing I'm going to throw in before I go on to that.